Good morning. Welcome everybody to the Ames uh, 2021 Tech Fest uh, presenting the IP Showcase. My name is Wes Simpson and I'll be serving as your host during our presentations today. And uh, right out of the bat, we have one of our uh, best speakers, uh, Mr. Brad Gilmer, who is the executive director of both the uh, Advanced Media Workflow Association and the Video Services Forum. And Brad is gonna be giving us um, a big picture view of IP systems. So take it away, Brad. Thank you very much, Wes. And it's an honor to be asked to kick things off here at the Tech Fest. Uh, appreciate that very much. Um, for those of you that have seen me present before, uncharacteristically, I'm gonna do a little bit of reading during this presentation because uh, I didn't put this together and I wanna be sure that um, the smart people who did uh, their words are, are what you get to hear, so forgive me if my style is a little bit different. So today we want to talk about the network media systems big picture. This is a, a series of diagrams and really a, a tool that people can use to get a sense of all of the different components and uh, in IP media systems and how those components fit together. And it really gives us an opportunity to understand key elements of a networked system and the technologies that enable their success. So the document which uh, is behind the uh, slides that you'll see here seeks to explain how the functionality of traditional systems is achieved using IT-based infrastructures and illustrates how current and emerging technologies work together to go further and enable a fully networked media system. It also explains how this is delivered by trade associations and their members across our industry. I wanna be sure and give credit to uh, our colleague, Felix Poulan at CBC Radio Canada, who was the one who started this effort and also recognized the members of the AMWA and MOS steering committee that commented extensively on Felix's work. You can download the big picture and not just the uh, uh, slides that you'll be seeing here, but a, a companion document that explains the slides from www.amwa.tv. And if you go to that URL, you will see the uh, first graphic, the first slide of the big picture document here. The, I'm showing that in, in the red with this big red arrow here. If you click on that, that will take you to a download link uh, to download this document. So you might want to do that as we go through this presentation or download it and share it with your colleagues later. This drawing shows at a high level all the major blocks of functionality required in a generic networked media facility. And then, as you can see, it's got four layers, the media and infrastructure layer, the control layer, the monitoring layer, and the security layer. And if you look closely, those all stack one on top of the other. The media and infrastructure layer really is the bread and butter of our industry. That's where content gets created and, and moves around in a facility. Moving from the top of this drawing down through the bottom, the layer consists of tools and infrastructure needed to trans create and transport professional media. We can see that a production department, and that's what's meant by the word the production there, a production department uses services, that's the next layer down, to create and consume media flows. So you can see we're going from production services flows. These flows exist in a facility that uses IT-based infrastructure, whether that infrastructure is on-premise or in the cloud. And the services used by the creative process are provided by devices. So that's important. If you see devices are in that flows layer, but those devices are what expose services that people in the production department can consume. And that's an important concept that's been around since the JTNM reference architecture was developed a number of years ago, that devices expose services that people use in order to, to 
participate in the media business. So just remember that as kind of an overall way to get yourself orient, oriented here. And the services used by the creative process are provided by devices that are interconnected by media transport. Pretty obvious, but again, this pr just provides a common language or a common way of thinking about these IT systems. So that's the media uh, block. The infrastructure block really consists of very traditional IT uh, pieces, uh, but we make sense of those uh, and we make use of those uh, in specific ways for our industry. Moving on to control, the next layer down. Uh, while media is at the core of our business, if we can't control the devices and the processes and the workflows, then that media is essentially locked up and we can't get at the value of that media. So um, the control layer allows creative personnel to exercise, exercise operational control over the production facility during the production process. At lower levels of the control layer, services and devices are provisioned and media flows are routed where they're needed. So a fairly traditional view of uh, the control plane where you've got operational, you can almost think of that as um, real-time control and then provisioning, which might be, you know, in the old days, the wiring up of the facility and media routing. I, I think that's pretty uh, pretty common concept and would be the same if you're talking about a, an SDI facility or a, uh, an IP facility, you're getting the, the content from sources to destinations there. Monitoring, monitoring is an interesting one. This layer provides critical information about the status of the media facility and allows personnel to be able to quickly identify and address problems. That's true and would be true whether you're talking about SDI facilities or you're talking about uh, IP facilities. But in IP facilities, we have, uh, I believe, and a number of people who are working with these new facilities believe that the, the trends analysis and the usage statistics and other uh, advanced capabilities that are very common best practices in the IT world can really help us in new ways in our business um, in, in these IT facilities. So that's a, a layer to keep an eye on. And lastly, security. If you look carefully, you'll see that the security act layer acts across the entire network media system template, providing controlled access to other layers. Security is important, but it's not necessarily interoperable. Um, and that really hadn't occurred to me until Thomas Edwards, I don't know, Thomas, if you're on here, but Thomas brought that point up. And of course, as soon as he said it, I immediately understood, of course, people could do, could secure, you know, user access or many other aspects of, uh, of a media facility in many different ways. And without some conscious effort, you got chaos. And so, um, there's been quite a bit of work done on security and we'll touch on that later. So that um, kind of sets the stage. And if you would like to use this template, um, a suggestion would be that, that you perhaps introduce it the way that I did so that you set the stage with a, a pretty simple graphic. And then if we go on, uh, it, it, we get a lot more specific. So the next slide I'm gonna show has a lot more detail in it, but frankly, the value, and I think the, the devil, as they say, is in the details. And if we don't get into the details, then this template overview, while it's useful, um, doesn't really deliver all the value that it could. So, I'm hoping that you guys can see this all right. It's a pretty busy slide, um, but as I, as I say, it's busy for a reason. We wanted to add the detail here. Um, and again, we're identifying big blocks, and I think you could break down almost any one of these blocks and probably, frankly, do a doctoral dissertation on them. Um, but, Again, I think Felix's goal was 
at a high level, and even though we call this a detail slide, it's still at a very high level, to show all of the significant big pieces of uh, an IT facility so that we could really start thinking and talking about that in a, in a common way across the industry. So um, I'm not going to go through all of this, but um, I, there's quite a bit of detail in the, uh, in the paper that I showed with the download link there. Um, and, and you can take your own time and look through this. But just to give you a flavor of how this works, those production people that we talked about at the top of the media block there, they use dashboards, routing panels, control surfaces like an audio console or mixing console and video monitors, all kinds of things to interact with those services that we talked about. If you remember, I said that devices offer up services. Well, what kind of services? Can we get a little more specific? Well, yeah, we can. How about capture? How about store and retrieve? How about transform? Whatever that might be, a, a, a rate conversion or size conversion or whatever it might be. Uh, mix effects, encode, decodes, audio mixes, all of that stuff. And there are, of course, many, many more, hundreds, uh, really. Um, but those services all come from these devices. If we move down to the flow layer, we see that those devices exist and I think for many of us who are of a certain age, we think of a device as a physical device. But I wanna be clear here that there's nothing here that says this device is a physical thing you can go touch. Um, you might be able to go touch the general purpose compute platform hardware that it's running on, but these devices can pop up and be used and then go away um, uh, on, on a moment's notice. They can be, as the infrastructure says, it really depends on what sort of infrastructure you're using, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud. And even if it's on-prem uh, and not in the cloud, if you look at the block that says server virtualization, you can still use containers, go serverless, and have computer storage resources that are on-prem or in the cloud, and they can be physically instantiated or they could uh, come and go as needed. We work very hard to uh, in, uh, in the SMPTE, and I wanna uh, give uh, credit to those guys. They've worked very hard to use existing uh, IT specifications there, and then in the whole 2110 standard suite, talk about how you would use those uh, different things and whether they're transports like RTP uh, or network services like NTP and, and PTP. Um, they've done great work to really use bedrock, uh, widely deployed and widely understood services in these IT facilities. Um, maybe as we're looking through this, we can look uh, across at the control. Um, and if we look at the control plane, People who uh, are uh, maybe in the in the playout world will understand what scheduling systems are and the kind of automation system that we use for on-air playout. And then going down, kind of down the, the control stack, we see service control. And in the case of service control, we're talking about instantiating a service. So you might think of it as a network playout channel. And so, yeah, I know we're using services in the media layer one way and services in the operation control layer another way. Sorry, uh, our industry uses a lot of overloaded terminology. But uh, you see the more the real time stuff, the service control, the event and tally. And then down below, you see the flow connections um, in the control system, which then if you skip back over to the to the right, to the flows section, you'll see uh, conceptually, it's a little bit buried, but there's actually an arrow here that flows into the device from a source to a flow, to a sender, to a stream that goes across a media transport. You see that arrow, but then it's kind of hard to see this other arrow here, into a receiver that recreates the flow that goes to a destination. 
And if you are working in a 2110 environment, it's really important to understand the terminology and the way that works, um, that sources create flows that are emitted from a sender as a stream that is caught by a receiver that then emits a flow again that goes to a destination and the connections are made between sources and destinations. Um, again, just trying to help us um, understand and, and speak in a common way about these things. Um, I'll skip over monitoring, except just to point out this trends and analytics piece that we talked about and performance piece. We believe that these are gonna be really important going forward. And I wanna to go to security. And the point here about security is just that this goes from audit and kind of user level, who was logging in, who was making changes, all the way down to stream encryption and directory access and network control access that might be controlled as part of a software defined network. So that security, although it's kind of off to the, to the far left here in this drawing, it really underlies everything in these IP facilities. So, at this point, just to recap, we have talked about the um, overview and we've talked about the detail. So now how can you use this in a conversation? And I'm gonna give you two examples. The first one is some people talk about NMOS and they wanna understand, well, where does NMOS fit in an IP facility? Well, this is a perfect document to use to answer that question. Then I'm gonna talk about uh, JTNM TR 1001-1, which talks about if you're gonna stand up a 2110 PTP NMOS operation in a kind of an enterprise scale environment, what do you need from the devices and what services do you need to have available on the network in order to stand up that? So this first slide, basically takes, uh, let's see, I was trying to go backwards. There we go. Takes this detail slide and then lays on top of it the NMOS and says, well, what part does NMOS play in all of this? Well, NMOS doesn't do everything. Sorry, it's not gonna solve all the problems. 2110 isn't solving all the problems. PTP isn't solving all the problems. Um, we needing to, to use different components and different specifications and standards to build complete IP facilities. And that's one of the points of, of this, uh, this whole uh, big picture document. But anyway, um, the, the group that prepared this went through and it looked at these different blocks and it said, well, where does NMOS currently have coverage. And so down at the bottom here, you can see on my screen, this is kind of an olive green. Um, and they went through and they marked using this legend, interface specifications and best current practices, where uh, the NMOS specifications work. And so two that are well known are ISO 4 for discovery and registration and ISO 5 to actually make connections between senders and receivers. And actually more specifically, to tell receivers to join a stream that's being emitted by a sender. Um, so you can see ISO 4, ISO 5, ISO 8 is an audio channel mapping specification. So one thing that's new about IP facilities is that when this sender emits a stream, it's probably, if it's in a device that's, let's say, well, if it's in a device, that device may be emitting multiple streams, right? And those multiple streams need to be associated and they have meaning. So if it's audio, you need to know which channels are on what streams. If it's a camera that has a microphone mounted on it, then it might be helpful to know that that video coming out of that camera and the audio coming out of that camera are grouped together, they're associated. And so there's ISO 8 for audio channel mapping and there's BCP 002-01 about groupings of, for senders and receivers. Um, 
Thomas Edwards and the security group and, and also involving uh, input from the EBU and a lot of uh, CISOs in, in the industry developed uh, authorization and uh, cert uh, certificate provisioning specifications and secure communications for the NMOS APIs, not for everything in a facility, but specifically making those available. Um, so that's shown over here. Then we've got NMOS in development shown in on my computer yellow and future stuff that um, we're talking about tackling now is in orange. So this is not really a talk about NMOS. It's just showing how you could use this uh, template as you're discussing your IP facility, either in-house or maybe with the users or vendors, whatever. Um, the last slide that I've got here on the template shows it being used to show the scope of JTN MTR 1001. And so in here, you can see JTN MTR 1001 specifies that you will use ISO 4 and ISO 5 and so on, but it also specifies that the transport will be RTP, that you need to have DHCP and DNS available as network services. It makes use of PTP, NTP, and LLDP and that it's a specification that's really looking at the LAN environment, not wireless or public network or whatever. So um, this shows um, the application of this template to a, a, another area and just as a way of uh, enhancing communications. So what are the key takeaways? The big picture document is generic. It identifies key elements of a networked media system, contains four layers, the media and infrastructure layer, control, monitoring, and security, and allows users and manufacturers to visualize where different components sit within IP-based facilities. And I, I think I might have added a, another point here that it could make communications easier at a time when we have so many overloaded terms uh, and people may not really be clear what they're talking about. It gives us something to, to use to help us communicate better uh, in the industry. So the networked media system, big picture, there's a direct link to it, but I think that the easier way, if I just go start my presentation over again, the easier way to get to it is to just go to amwa.tv and click right there on the presentation. So that's it. Um, Wes, I'm happy to take questions if we have any, and otherwise uh, I'm done. That'd be great. Thanks, Brad. That was very interesting. If anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to unmute your microphone. Go ahead, well, John. Yeah, um, I've been trying to do some uh, research for some training in house here and one of the things I've, I've stumbled upon is that there doesn't seem to be a good, good glossary of terms related to how we now relate to channels, groups, streams, <laughs> flows. And uh, there was one other one that was in there that kind of described, maybe it was flock, a flock of signals. I'm not sure. But it, 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 dealing with AES uh, and the AES uh, constrained uh, options within 2110, can, can you help define what, how those are related um, uh, to one another if they are? Okay, so do you, give me the terms one more time and I, I'm okay, hang on. Let looking me, up uh, something real quick while, while you're doing that. So I'm listening, so but the, I'm also the, looking. The terms yeah. are, uh, you know, we're, we're accustomed to uh, dealing with, well, how many channels is that thing? Well, it's got 16 channels, it's got eight channels, uh, uh, that kind of thing. So now it has, now we have devices that have eight channels or 16 channels but we can only do eight channels at a time. So, so in a 16 channel SDI device, if we're gonna convert it to AES or into 2110 audio AES streams, we need to go ahead and put together, is it two groups of streams or is it two streams of flows or is it, so it's channels, streams, flows, trunks and groups. Yeah. Those, those terms. Okay, got it. So um, 
the, the first thing I'm going to show up on the screen real quick is that there is a document out here called the JTNM Reference Architecture, and it's available at jtnm.org. And at the end of it is a glossary of terms that are, were specifically developed to try and help us disambiguate uh, a bunch of overloaded terminology. So uh, I just wanted to point that out that, that it exists. I can promise you Google does not know that exists because I have been all over the place. Okay, so that's- But a, it's the, good to see that. I'll, I'll make sure and look for that. So JTNMRA, but um, let me go back to this and say that the terms that are used in, in um, in 2110 and in the NMOS world, or you have a source or multiple sources, a source produces a, a flow one, um, and that sender emits a stream to a receiver. And in the AMWA terminology, you use something called the group hints entry in the, reg in the ISO 4 registry to signify that a group of flows emitted from the sender um, are, are related together. The reason that it's a group hint is because systems can disregard it. 